Okay, we're going to talk about sample variability and how important it is to your assessment to have a conversation around sample variability. Now obviously we take a sample of the population so we can kind of make an inference back to what's going on in the population. That's why we do a sample. So we take samples and we look at them and we try to make some sort of inference about um, back in the population, about their heights or their feet size or whatever it might be. Now remember we want to take a, a good sample and what we mean by a good sample is that it's randomly taken, that it eliminates bias, um, that it um, reflects what's the population, the demographics of the population, so it's representative of, of the population and all these things have to be in place. Um, now let's just say, take for instance, let's just say that all these things have been taken into account and we've done a good sample technique, we've eliminated bias as best we can and we've got a representative sample. The problem is is that every time we take a sample from the population the samples are always going to be different. They're going these are four samples taken from exactly the same population of census at school all on height all the same size 30, um, 30 individuals were, were, were taken out of the population and you can see that these samples are all very different from each other. The medians are different. The interquartile ranges are different. And so these samples all tell a story about what's going on back in the population, but they tell a bit of a different story each time, a bit of a different story. So what story is true? Well, this is something that we're going to have to do some more work around. But for the time being, when we have a conversation about sampling and about the things that we're seeing in our samples, we have to take into account sample variability. And the fact that samples are all going to be different from each other, the medians will be different, the interquartile ranges will be different, the means will be different, even though they're taken from the same population. And that's called sample variability or sample error. And we cannot eliminate that variability. There is always going to be some error when we do sampling because we're never going to have exactly what's going on in the population. We're going to have sort of an estimate of what's going on back in the population. So we try to minimize the error and the variability and we can do that through our techniques and our sample sizes and so on, but we can never eliminate it from the process. So we have to speak to that and we have to say that that fact that we're taking one sample only and that's what my investigation is taking a sample and that a single sample is not, you know, if I take another sample it's going to be different. Another sample might be different amongst the medians and the interquartile ranges and it's going to have a bit of a different story that it's going to tell. The other thing is, is that it's about sample size as well. Sample size also impacts sample variability. And I'm just going to show you a animation. Now, up at the very top here is what the population and its box plot it would look like in the, if we took the height of girls of age 12 of the entire New Zealand population. It would look something like this with a box plot like this. But we never see this. This is the unseen world. We don't see this. What we do is we then take samples and we can take samples of size 20 or size 100 or size 500. Now if you take a look at the samples, these are, this is an animation of uh, hundreds of samples that are being taken of size 20. And you can see that the animation, this is running in real time, so these samples, hundreds and hundreds of samples of 20 are being taken from the population. And what do you notice? Well, you notice that the graphs, these samples are all different. All right, the, the medians sh shift back and forth. The interquartile range, the size of the box shifts back and forth. And it does that quite considerably at size of 20. Now, if we take a sample size of 100, then we still see that there is this shifting going on and this changing. So this is hundreds and hundreds of samples that are being taken and the animation is showing us that there's still shifts and medians and interquartile ranges, but it doesn't seem to be as big as the size um, 20 samples. And then if we increase that sample size even more to 500, we can see that this graph now is changing. These, these samples are now changing very, very little. The median is shifting, but not nearly as much. 
and you're getting a much closer resemblance to the population and what's going on in the population when you take a sample size of 500. There's still some change, but it's quite minimal. And so sample size greatly impacts um, what happens with sample variability. So basically we're saying that when you take a bigger sample size, you get less and less of the static change in the samples. So this blue up here represents the medians and you can see the wide band of, of where the medians fall. Basically they fall, if I was to draw a line, this is the, the difference in the medians. It has that wide a band that are possible medians that can happen with, with the sample size. And with, with the 100, the sample size of size 100, we have a smaller width of where the medians will fall and a, a little bit ch less change in the box plot. And then if we take a size of 1,000, we get even a smaller confidence interval. That's like your confidence interval. Uh, smaller confidence interval where the medians will fall. Um, and, and the shift in the box is much, much less. So you can see that you can eliminate sample variability to a very large extent if you take a large sample size, and that also needs to be discussed.